What's up you guys? This is Devin with Century Effects Studios back with another video and today we're going to be cleaning our camera sensor. But before we get started, a word of warning. You are responsible for your own sensor. So please do not destroy it. Please be very, very careful about all of this sensitive gear. Also, this is my method of doing things. If somebody likes to do it a different way, they like to do it their way. Some people don't even think that you know, the photographer should be doing this. They should send it off to a professional. I like to save money. I like to do it my way. If you like this, share it, like, subscribe, and let's get started. A lot of people are buying mirrorless cameras now with mirrorless sensors in them, which means they don't have a mirror to block anything as far as dirt or, you know, dust, grime, anything in the air when they go to change their lens. So they need to understand how to clean both. All right, so let me explain what I have on the table here. I have the 5D Mark II, which is a DSLR. It has a mirror in it. I have the Sony A7R Mark II. It does not have a mirror in it, and it's a full frame sensor. I also have the Panasonic G7, which is a micro four thirds mirrorless camera. Now, all these are sitting on this microfiber cloth. I like to keep this here just for safety. Once I get done cleaning my camera sensor, I flip it over, put it on the cloth like you see here. These are dirty cloths that I sit off to the side here, but I got like 60 or 70 of these cloths because they're so important to keeping your lens clean. I also have lens um, caps here, front and rear caps. And more importantly here, I have the Micro Four Thirds cleaning sensor swab. This one's from VSGO. I am not sponsored by them. I just I just bought them because I trust them. I've used them before and um, they have this size, which is Micro Four Thirds. And I also have full frame sensor cleaning swabs. The main difference between these two swabs, of course, is the size here. This is the Micro Four Thirds cleaning swab and this is the full frame cleaning swab. I also have this VSGO blower here. This is one of the funnest blowers I've ever had. It's almost like a stress ball, but it's so well made. I love this. It makes you feel like you're getting way more air than the average um, blower. And uh, it's just really well made. I love using this thing. I have sensor cleaner as well from VSGO. I got Zeiss lens cleaner. I got the VSGO lens pen. I got the microfiber cleaning cloth here. I got the lens cleaning cloth here. And last but not least, I have the VSGO camera lens cleaner. Now, just a little friendly tip. These two are not the same. You got the sensor cleaner here and you have the camera lens cleaner here. And we won't be using the camera lens cleaner in this video. We'll just be using the VSGO camera sensor cleaner. The next thing we need to go over is what kind of camera you have. Now, first off, this is the 5D Mark II. This is a digital single lens reflex camera or a DSLR. Why we call it that? It's because of the mirror that's inside. So right here, you see a mirror. This mirror reflects the image up to the eyepiece here and back to the viewer through here. Now this mirror is actually blocking the sensor. So what we need to do is we need to cut this camera on, right? We need to go down to sensor cleaning right here. Yeah. And you want to go to clean manually. You also want to make sure you have a relatively full battery. So if we look up here, we can see that we have about three notches of battery. So that should be good enough to start the cleaning. Once you see that, you go to clean manually. It'll say the mirror is locking up for cleaning, whatever. And then once you're done, power off. So yes, click OK. And once we click OK, let's see what it does here. Click OK and it lifts up the mirror so you can see the sensor. This is a full frame sensor. You could have an APS-C size sensor. That's a little bit smaller, but if it's a DSLR like this, it would have a mirror in it that looks exactly like this one and you would have to go through the exact same process. All right, I'm going to flip this down so it doesn't get any dust in there, but we're gonna clean it anyway. Now, if you have a modern full frame mirrorless camera, you're looking at something like this, the Sony A7R Mark II. Now, if it's very new, like within one year, you have the option to turn the shutter down 
will bring the shutter curtain down so it protects your sensor. But for most of us, we have the older A7Rs or A7Ss or A7s, and the sensor is already open and there's nothing you can do about it. And this is the sensor here. All right, and if anybody needs to understand exactly what the sensor is, it looks like a green mat. So you can see a little bit like a green-ish kind of tint to it. That's the difference between the sensor and the mirror. If you're confused, you don't have to do anything. It's already open once you take the lens off. The last camera here is the Panasonic G7. The G7 is another mirrorless camera, except it's a micro four thirds sensor. And so as you can see, it's a lot smaller, like half the size of a full frame sensor. All right, so we got two full frames and one micro four thirds. Now for this process, we only need about three things. The sensor cleaner here. We also need the blower here. And the last thing is the sensor swab. Now, since I have a micro four thirds and two full frame sensors, I'm going to be using both of these. And I have multiple copies of both versions. If you just, maybe you might have just one version. We'll just use the one that matches your sensor size. So if you have an APS-C, get that one. If you have a micro four thirds, get this one. If you have a full frame sensor swab or a full frame sensor, get this one. All right, let's start off with our full frame DSLR here, the Canon 5D Mark II. Now what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take your blower here. You're supposed to blow it out face down. So I can't really show you that in the camera here. So basically we're gonna take this and blow it face down. I try to go into the circular motion to get all the dust out. Do this upside down, of course, so the dust can fall. All right, now here's the hard part. We're gonna put the sensor down. Be very careful, we're gonna open up our full frame. Sensor swap. Be careful because once it comes out, you want to make sure that it doesn't touch anything, right? So I usually hold them like this. And then when I'm ready and in position, this is hard to do and be careful while you're doing it. What you want to do is inspect around your sensor. See if you can actually pinpoint where the dust dust, dirt, or grime is. If you've taken a picture or taken a video and you've seen it, you kind of have an idea of where it is. So keep that in mind. Also, you want to take a picture at F22, take a picture of something white, which means focus and recompose, and take it at F22 and see if you can find anything on the sensor that way. I'm not going to do that for this video because I'm going to make it nice, short, and sweet and simple. But now I'm going to take the sensor swap out of its case. Now they first tell you to swab it dry. And I like to flip it over to give it a good cleaner side. And that's it. So now this one is contaminated and you throw it away. I'm gonna sit it off to the side here. Now, if you still see something on your sensor, they advise you to then go to the wet method. I'm gonna open a new one. By the way, I'm not sponsored by VSGO. And what you're gonna do is hold it like this and get about two drops on there. Let's see here. That's one drop, that's two drops there. So that's about three drops right there. Now this is if you saw some stuff still on your sensor after you did the dry swab. All right, we're gonna sit all the way down in there. Make sure it's nice and flat on the sensor. Don't press too hard and just run it across once. All right, now let's look into it. I know it's kind of hard for you guys to see. I can see a little bit better. All right, that looks pretty clean to me. All right, and we don't have to go over it anymore. That's pretty much it. I'm gonna set that full frame sensor to the side. Now I'm gonna cut this off and watch when I cut this off what happens to your sensor here. I'm gonna cut the off button off and it brings your mirror back down, bang. So now I know the mirror is protecting it and it's also face down. And if you want to, you can actually put a sensor cap on it. Now these are lens caps, but you understand what I'm talking about. All right, now off to the A7R Mark II. 
right before I'm about to clean up the sensor, I just leave it on here like a, like, you know, a half open straw, right? So it protects your cloth or your swab here before you actually open your sensor up or get your sensor clean. That's pretty much it. Now here's a top pro tip. Don't get scared if you see the sensor moving. Watch this. This is the Sony A7R Mark II. Now watch this. I'm gonna put the swab down and I'm gonna jiggle it just a little bit, but you can see here the sensor is actually moving around. That's the internal stabilization for the Sony bodies. Sony bodies and Canon bodies have this too. I don't know if the Canon sensors move like this, but I know the Sony's do. And these are not the only sensors that move like this for the Sony bodies. I know camcorders have internal image stabilization just like this. But I did a dry run and it looks like the Sony sensor is all clean. Now, if you do not have to do a wet run, you don't have to. Now I know for a fact that my Panasonic G7 hasn't been cleaned with a wet run yet. And I know it needs a wet run. So I am going to clean it with a dry run first. And this one's very easy. Back and forth, there's a little bit bigger than the swab is. And like I said, my last time, I always try to split that swab to get the cleanest out of it. All right. And that's about two drops right there. All right, and that's sensor cleaning. Now there's many different ways you can go about doing this. A lot of people have different ways they like to do it. This is the way I like to do it. Now, if you have any comments, links in the description below, like, share, subscribe. I'm Devin with Century Effects Studios. If this helps, let me know and stay tuned for the next video.